Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly. I'm Brad. And we're here with our Cruise Tips 101 Part 2. These are tips 11 through 20. Stick around. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for watching Part 2 of our Cruise Tips 101 series. As Kimberly said, this is part two of, of our Cruise Tips 101 series where we're giving you 101 cruise tips. Thanks for helping us march towards 1,000 subscribers. Please, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because at 1,000 subscribers, we have got a fantastic giveaway. Awesome. Yes. Yes. So now, without further ado, we're going to go into tips 11 through 20. Yes. Kimberly's going to start. I am. With tip number 11. Number 11. If you're driving to the port, check the parking locations and the daily parking rights ahead of time. So, the, you know, that's an extra fee that you have to account for when you get off the ship that you're going to have to pay for that parking. So if you are driving, I know that there are options um, a little further away from, from where the cruise terminal sure, is. Off-site parking. Off-site parking. You can do that. And more times than not, they'll have transportation there to get you to the terminal. Otherwise, you can pay a little bit more, I believe, per day and park closer to the cruise terminal. We personally have not parked yet at a cruise terminal. We have not. We've no. always taken transportation. So actually, when we go on our cruise, uh, our Halloween cruise in yep. October, we're actually driving to the Port of Long Beach. So we'll have our... Actually, we're driving to the Port of San Pedro. <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry. We are driving to the Port of San Pedro. Exactly. I, that's right. Long Beach was the last cruise. Yes. Um, so, and just check and make sure, you know, what the rates are so you can be yes. prepared for that charge. You know, here they're like anywhere from, I think, 18 to yeah. 20 bucks or something a day. So, um, just check that out. All right. And number 12. Numero 12. Yes. Make sure that you get a good night's rest before you leave. If you can. If you can. Sometimes, <laughs> exactly, sometimes you're like really pumped up and amped yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but try to get a good night's rest, whether it's the night before the cruise, whether you're leaving on your airplane, whatever you're doing, because, you know, traveling, first of all, is tiring. Yes. Um, embarkation day on a cruise ship is pretty hectic and pretty chaotic. and Except you know, for the last one we had um, going on the Splendor, embarkation was not an issue. Yeah, as far as just getting on the ship, it was yeah. it was very, very quick. But it's just the ship itself, it's pretty, you know, there's a lot of people. Right. There's a lot yeah, of those first days were like... Oh, we're gonna have such a great time. We're gonna be up so late, and it's around nine o'clock, and we're dead. Yeah, we're between done. nine and ten o'clock, we were back in the cabin because we were we were wiped out. So all right, try to get a good night's rest. Number thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Yeah, that's another lucky number of mine. I have several. Arrive to the cruise port at your assigned time or after. Yeah, so some cruise lines use, um, and they're getting into assigned boarding times now. Um, with Carnival on your boarding pass, it tells you your boarding times between this time and this time. Right. So if your cruise line uses a boarding time, just you know get there at your assigned time. Not that you can't get there early, just don't get there super early because you may be in for a, a long, a little, a, a little bit of a wait. Yes. So um, you know try to get there as close to, to your assigned time as possible. All right, honey. Number uh -huh. fourteen. I think, I think we kind of mentioned this already a little bit of it, but. Yes. Um, be really, really patient uh, on embarkation day. Um, yes. Be patient with your fellow cruise guests. Be patient with the cruise staff. You have to understand, depending on the size ship you're going on, mm -hmm. you know, but if you're going on any kind of the modern cruise ships, you know, they're 3,000 passengers right. and up. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to get a lot of people onto the yep. ship at one time. So. And get a lot of people off the ship, and, too. Exactly. They're trying to debark the, the passengers before. Um, so just be exercise some patience. You're going on vacation. Just relax. Just enjoy it. Just relax. En enjoy the experience. You're going to have to wait in lines and you know no, what? It and, is what it is. But you're on vacation. All right. Number 15. Make sure to keep your travel docs and boarding pass on your person on embarkation day. We kind of talked about this the last video. But you want to have those items of identification, especially your boarding pass and your passport, with you on embarkation day because... Once you're at the cruise terminal, the last thing you want to do is have to go home to pick anything up. And then you may not because if you flew in, it's a yeah, nightmare. Yeah, so just the, the, the most common thing that people do yes. is they leave their passport or their boarding pass in their luggage, luggage. that they've just checked in with the luggage <laughs> porter outside. So um, 
don't do that. Keep it on your person, whether it's in a purse or a, a I folder. I say get we, yourself you know, a little folder or a that's little what thing we do. and just put it all in there. So that way you just grab, you know that you have to have that with you. Yeah, we have a little accordion folder that we yeah. keep all that stuff in. So it's yep. with us at all times. So. All right. All right. Number 16. Number 16 is bring a small carry-on bag with a change of clothes with you on embarkation day. Not necessarily clothes you're going to wear to dinner because on the first night um, they don't make you, you know, there's really no dress code because right. they understand that you may not get your luggage before dinner. But bring a swimsuit if you want to swim. Right. Right. Bring sunscreen. Right. Bring any medications that you have to take as well because your bags sometimes will not get to your cabin mm -hmm. until after dinner. In, in the uh, Sometimes it's not until the late evening that your bags show up at your door. So, so honestly... You typically get your bags before you go to dinner. Typically, yes. you do. But in that time period when you get on the ship until the muster drill, if your idea of fun is to go swimming, then you'll need to have your swimsuit because yeah. your bag will not be there. Yeah, if you're one of those folks that wants to jump in the hot tub, the hot tubs always seem to be the thing that yeah. seems to, to be busy on embarkation. If, if you want to jump in the hot tub, bring a suit. Bring your bathing suit. Bring your bathing suit. All right. Not your birthday suit. <laughs> your bathing suit. Your bathing suit. Number 17. Try to avoid the elevators on embarkation day. Um, they're really crowded on those days. And it, it's also a, a kind thing to do because there are some people that have disabilities that need to use the elevators. They can't use the stairs. So We're not um, saying walk up 11 flights of stairs. No, 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 no. <laughs> but no. if you just got to go like maybe a couple floors up, consider using the right. stairs. It's the busiest. You right. will see the elevators. The whole cruise right. is going to be on embarkation day. Right. So um, like if you just got to go up a couple flights, take the stairs. And I understand if you're, you're carrying on your luggage, then it's... That's a different story. That, you know, you're going to want to use the elevator because the last thing you want to do is try to lug luggage up the no. stairs and, ha and slip and fall. So don't do that. But if you're going light and you're not and you're not carrying anything, use the stairs. That's right. Especially going downstairs too. Trust me. Yeah. Get as much exercise as you can. Yes. Right off the bat. Start burning exercise. those calories before you even start eating. <laughs> All right. Number 18, honey. Oh. No, number 18. Yeah. Number 18. Is This is another thing to avoid on embarkation well, day. Well, we recommend. We recommend. I don't want to say, hey. We yeah, recommend. We recommend in our experience. Yes. Avoid the buffet. Not because the food's not good. No. Because it is going to be the absolute busiest place on the cruise ship on embarkation day. Again, it's the busiest that will ever be the entire cruise is embarkation day. People just head and beeline straight for the buffet when they get on the uh, yeah. when they get on the ship. So cruise equals food. Cruise equals food. <laughs> and the buffet. You know, it's funny because there's so many different options now on cruise ships too, other than you know, yeah. guys burgers, guys burgers, and, and and pizza and all that. But it still seems. Everybody but seems to flock to the flocks to the buffet. So if you if you can avoid it on embarkation day, um, avoid it because you're gonna wait. You're gonna wait in line to to get food. Uh, I'd be going to Blue Iguana. Yeah, Blue Iguana Cantina. That's a good one. That's right. Mm, yeah. That's a whole other video, by the <laughs> <Yeah>. way. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number nineteen. The pool deck is generally the least crowded place on the ship during embarkation day. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So. You'll find as you move your way up, you know, things get a little less crowded. Once you get out to the pool deck on the ship, there's people out there, but it's not just a mass of people. What's, so. what's the most crowded on embarkation day? The buffet. The buffet. <laughs> the buffet. The buffet is the most crowded, no question. Is it the atrium it. is the second? Yeah, and then the atrium because people because are, people are coming in. Yeah, and people stuff. are immediately yeah. going to customer service, and most of the time on most ships, you actually enter into the atrium area you do. on most ships. And that's so. kind of like a what do they call it? A bottlenecking a little bit there when you're entering the ship at the atrium. Yeah, so for your first time cruisers, we don't want to give you the impression that it's just this massive humanity and you can't move. It's not no. like that at all. No. It's just busy. It's just very busy. There's a lot of people moving in different directions and going to guest services and going to the bars and you know, so um, that's the, the first place we head when we get on. That's the we know that's the first. We place. go to the bar. <laughs> get that cocktail get going. That, get get that my first, cocktail get, on. Get that first. Get my drink on. Got to get that to drink package. Got to get your money's worth. <laughs> if you buy the drink package. If you buy the drink package. All right. But that's in another video. That's in another video. And number 20. So the last tip number for 20. this 
video yes. is... If you want to explore the ship on embarkation day, do it from the top to the bottom. Yes. So as we said, the pool deck is generally going to be the least crowded. And right. even the decks above that are, are even, they're smaller, but there's nobody goes up there generally. Right. So if you want to explore the ship on embarkation day because you're waiting for your cabin to, you know, be ready for you to get to your, into your or cabin. Or you're vlogging. Or you're vlogging or whatever you're doing, right? And you want to do your ship exploration on that first day, yes. do it from the top down. Start at the top and start working deck by deck yeah. down because as you work your way down, right, the crowds start to disperse, the cabins are getting ready, people are heading to their cabins, yeah. people are heading to the buffet. Usually um, right after, I would say, Right after the first dinner um, on the first, on embarkation day is when things really start to like just spread thin out, out. Thin out. Thin out. That's they really the start to yeah. thin out. Because when yeah. everybody's in their cabins, they're going to dinner and, yeah. and, and things start to, you know, quiet down and people disperse um, not to just one area on yeah. the ship. They're dispersed all over the ship right. from the different bars and lounges and, you know, piano, whatever they're doing. Right. So those are our tips 11 through 20. Don't forget, we're, this is a 10 part series, so we'll have additional tips to give you. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Again, if you enjoy these vlogs, if you find them useful, if you find them helpful, please consider subscribing. Hit that little bell, it'll notify you every time we upload one of these tip videos, which again, they're gonna be coming pretty regular, two a week mm -hmm. for the next five weeks. At least, yes. Right? Um, you know, share it with your friends, share it with your family. Like, subscribe. Sorry, hit the little, hit the little, uh, what do you call that thing? This the thing. Bell, the thumb. The That's thumb. The give, like. Yeah, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> From Midnight Crazy, I'm Kimberly. I'm Brad. Thanks for again for watching. Bye. We'll see you later.